Oh, what an hour, what an hour to be the church and to be alive. The Bible declares that when the enemy shall come in like a flood, the Spirit of the Lord shall lift up a standard against him. And my prayer today is that the Spirit of God begin to lift up the standard. We begin to raise up the standard. Amen. This is not the time to retreat. This is not the time to back up. This is not time to go into the enemy's camp and camp out. This is the time. Now is the hour to go into the enemy's camp and take back what he's stolen from us. Can we just talk this morning? You know, I, listen, I, I have in that laptop, I have sermon after sermon after sermon after sermon. I told the morning service, I said, listen, I, I used to be one of those NBA preachers. And just three-pointers all day long. Three points to this, three points to that, three points to this. But sometimes we, 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 we need a little more than three points. My goal isn't necessarily, necessarily to get you to the Golden Corral before the Baptists get there. And, you know, people will get upset with you, you know, if you preach a little long. They start looking at you funny. But let me tell you, there, there are two types of preachers. There's the preacher that, that always has to say something. And then there's the preacher that actually has something to say. And so I, I, I challenge you today, we're going to preach out of the word. I'm going to try to teach and talk out of the word. I don't really want to preach at you, uh, but, uh, uh, but I challenge you that we as believers, we have to discern and decide, okay, are you with me? For those of us who are, for those of us who are not on milk, a milk diet, mm -hmm, but for those of us on a meat diet, oh, man. The Bible says that, that he that uses milk is unskillful in the, in the words of righteousness, in the ways of righteousness. But, he, but strong meat belongs to them who are mature, who are full of age. Are you with me? Who have their senses exercised to discern both good and evil by what? Reason of use. Just the reason of use. And so this is going to be a, a, a meat word today. Amen. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, it's leg day. It's leg day. Y'all remember that description? You know, leg day. Everybody wants to go to the gym for arm day, but this is, this is going to be leg day. And I'm just going to give a, now I'm, I'm, I made some people upset earlier, and it's, and it's okay. It's okay. And apparently Siri didn't catch that, but, but it's okay. Listen, I'm just going to be honest with you. I'm not here for a popularity contest. I, I may not be old enough or been far enough around the cup to see the handle, but I'm, I am so done with that stuff. I'm so done with it. It, it breaks my heart when, when most of the guys that I went to Bible school with, it's just like, hey, you know, we, God's going to give us a mega church. God, well, you know, bless your heart, but I'm done with mega churching. I'm ready to win a city. I'm ready to see a Nineveh come to God. I'm ready to see a Samaria come to God. Are you with me? I'll be the man at the well. I'll go back and tell everybody, come see a man. And I believe we're living in the day and the age now. It just, I, 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 I just don't like turning the news on. I just don't like turning, I don't like reading the newspaper. Now I read it, but let me tell you, I don't like reading it because if you're if you're not if you don't have your senses exercised to discern both good and evil, then you'll get caught in a little little trap. And we're going to talk about that trap today. We're going to talk about that snare. We'll get caught in the trap, and I and 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 it breaks my heart. But I'm telling you, we have got to get back to reading the Word of God. Oh, glory to God. We've got to get back to, well, Pastor JR, every time you preach, you, you talk about prayer and you talk about reading the word. Well, you, you got me figured out. Let me tell you, Noah preached for 120 years. Noah said it's going to rain. Nobody believed him. 
And the interesting thing is, uh, Brother Juan, the interesting thing is he preached and preached. And while he was preaching, the Lord said, hey, bro, go ahead in that ark that you done built. And here's the thing. If you look at it, it wasn't Noah that shut the door. Who shut that door? God shut the door. And so, yeah, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to preach on prayer. I'm going to preach on reading the word of God. Why? Because I believe the church of today, we have given up too much battleground to the enemy simply because we have not read the word of God. And the world has become so bold now as to come into the church and teach us what it is that we should believe. Oh, come on, somebody. In the book of 2 Peter, the Bible tells us that in the last days, that the, the, they're going to come antichrists. And even now, the antichrists are among us. Well, what are these antichrists doing? What, what are these antichrists doing? They're preaching a false gospel, okay? Uh, the gospel that is designed to get into people's pockets as opposed to get into their hearts. Are y'all with me this morning? And meanwhile, the world around us is falling apart. And then there are those who, but, but Pastor Jr., you know, it, it, we, 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 we shouldn't go out here and do these prayer meetings. We, we shouldn't go out here and, 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 and speak to the government, speak to our city. None of that matters anymore because it's, you know, it's just going to get worse. My Bible says that when you begin to see the problems arise in government, when you begin to see the plagues rise up, uh, uh, animals slight, rise up and slight, uh, smoke, smite uh, plagues among men, if you begin to see literally God in his fury, in his wrath, if my people, are you with me, who are called by my name shall do what? Humble themselves and do what? Pray and then seek my face, turn from their wicked ways. Now, I'm going to just throw this one in there for free. God's not talking about the world. The world's not called by his name. He's talking about the church. Oh, come on, somebody. He's talking about the church. Then will I hear from heaven and I'll forgive their sins and I'll heal the land. So I know some of us, have, you know, we've been paying attention to the news and, you know, we're, we're gathering up water and food and we're stocking up on bullets and rifles and that's fine. I'm not knocking those things at all, but I'm telling you, do not forsake the place of prayer. Oh, come on, somebody. And I'm going to, I'm just going to, can we talk? We're just going to talk. I'm not going to three, three-pointer today. We're just going to go all around the Bible, but we're going to start in the book of, I believe we're going to start in the book of Hosea. But I, I want to just, just, I have to quote John. Every time I preach, I just, I tell you, I have to quote John. John chapter 1, and, 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 and as believers, how many know we need to believe this? We need to believe on Jesus. We need to believe in Jesus. And most importantly, we need to believe Jesus. <laughs> the Bible says in John 1 and 1, in the beginning, I love it was the word just stop because see that's what they're challenging that's what politicians that's what the school systems that is what they're challenging and I don't care about your ideology I don't care if you looked under a microscope and saw an amoeba with a hello sign lit up I'm telling you right now in the beginning was the word and the word was God and the word was with God. And there is nothing that is made in this world that we, we, we see right now that was made without the word. Go down to John 1, 14. And this is where we're going to take issue with today. Okay. And, and, and again, I'm, trying to, I'm just trying to talk to you because I want you to hear my heart. I want you to hear what's been keeping me up these, these last few nights. John 1, 14, it says, and the word became flesh and did what? dwelt among us and I love it and we beheld his glory as of the only begotten of the father and what's this next part say full of grace stop right there we got that part but what we don't have is the second part Jesus and I'm going to be careful here 
not because I'm afraid of the world, but I'm going to be careful because I want to make sure that, that, that I deliver this in a way that the Spirit of the Lord can put it in your spirit. But see, because we've allowed the world to come and tell us what the church is, and we get caught on the great grace, 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 grace. Any gospel that exercises grace over repentance is a false gospel. I just just get it in your spirit. It is a false. I don't care if Reverend Pastor, Brother Deacon, Doctor, Preacher, Prophet from the Third Order of Heaven with the purple robe on. Told you different. I don't care if the man that has a ten thousand uh, the ten thousand member church told you different. I'm telling you right now, any gospel that emphasizes grace and not repentance is a false gospel. The Bible says he was full of grace and truth. Full of grace and come on, one more time, preach with me. He was full of grace and he was full of grace and truth. If he was just going around with greasy grace and sloppy agape, they would have never crucified him. They would have promoted him and given him a bigger church. Oh, Y'all with me this morning? But he was full of grace and truth. This is, God loved us so much that he reached into him, he reached into himself and he took grace and he took truth like clay and he began to form it in the image of his son. And once he saw, man, this is awesome, but you can't stay up here. You got to go down there. And then we beheld him. The glory of the only begotten of the Father. Walking and living and breathing and teaching among us, knowing that he was born to die. Somebody say, this is the gospel. He knew it every day he preached, whether it was to Nicodemus or blind Bonhomes, he knew that one day soon he'd have to give up the ghost. And he was okay with it. Full of grace and truth and so we have a duty as a church we have the duty to read the word of God we're not reading the word of God and I'm, 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 I'm just going to be honest with you well Pastor JR where, where do you think that we're having this issue and that issue listen the issue is not an attitude problem the issue is a heart problem at the heart of every problem is a problem with the heart and God gave us a prescription for that, and it's called the Word of God. Have you, read, have you read your Bible lately? Well, Pastor J.R., I haven't witnessed to anybody, and, 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 and I've been saved 13 years, never, never witnessed to anybody, never brought anybody to the Lord. Folks, every time I pick up that Bible and I read it, I am compelled to tell somebody about him. You cut me off in Walmart. You're not going to hear me say what you think would normally hear me say. You, you know, people jump in that line in front of you and act like they ain't seen you. I'm going to minister the gospel to you. And you know, I found out that when you minister the gospel, they jump back where they were before because they don't want to hear it. <laughs> I, I know I sound serious, but I'm telling you, I, I, I've got a goofy spirit. And part of my problem is that I ain't afraid of nothing. <laughs> Look, they can only kill the body. That's what they're going to do. One day, I, I've, I've had threats. I've had people threaten. I, I had it, literally a, a preacher threaten. I'm not going to use the words that that preacher said. But I said, listen, buddy, you may kill me. You may not. But let me tell you, when I get up, I'm still victorious. Why? Because I'm standing on the word of God. This is what the world is afraid of. And this is why they're, they're, we've been indoctrinated. The body of Christ has been indoctrinated into believing a false gospel. In the last days, many shall depart the faith, giving heed to seducing spirits and doctrines of devils. And we have allowed the world to literally tame us into not speaking about the issues that are affecting our world around us. Well, you know, you can't preach separation of church and state. Have you heard of Daniel? Y'all heard of Daniel? Read that book and then tell me that again, church, separation of church and state. Y'all heard of Isaiah? Read that book and then tell me that he didn't talk to the political standards of the world. 
Well, they're just getting too political. No, this is called the gospel of Jesus Christ. And one of the reasons we're having an issue is because the gospel is about a message calling people into repentance. But how can we call people into repentance over the things that we have preached tolerance? I'm going to be real with you. United Methodist Church is, is they're in a fight for their life right now. Hundreds of years of biblical and some of the best theologians came out of the, the Methodist church and Calvinists. And here we are. We're looking at this denomination hundreds of years later because of a legacy of tolerance, because of a legacy of greasy grace, sloppy agape, sugar daddy, lollipop, bubblegum gospel preaching. And now the enemy has switched strategies. He stopped at attacking this church, stopped attacking churches, and started joining them. Well, you know, brother so-and-so's got a, you know, he's got a good job. He's got a good business mind. Let's just vote him into office. Have you read the Bible? Oh, come on, yeah. Is this too much? I can preach on Jabez if you want me to. <laughs> Have you read the word? Okay, you look good in the suit. Wonderful. You got a television network. Great. Have you read the word? Do you tremble at his word? When you read the words of God, do you, feel the do you feel the power of God? Is it convicting you of your sin? We can, how is it that we can come and sit on the front pew full of sin and then leave with a smile? I'm not preaching at you. We're just talking. Amen? My heart just, my heart began to break. And, and, and as I'm, I'm praying and I'm wrestling with the Lord. Now, some of you who are with me this week, you know I have had a rough week, brother. <laughs> I have. And let me tell you, when you stand out for God, let me tell you, they're going to come at you. They're going to put a target. But I'm, this is what I'm saying. Beware when all men speak good of you. Beware. I, I, I am perfectly fine with people thinking that Pastor JR is simple. I'm, look, I'm fine with it. Um, he's, he's ignorant. Yes, I am. Glory to God. Because God constantly uses the, the, the foolish things to confound the wise. And even at God's weakest point, he's still much wiser than man. My comprehension is not a prerequisite to my obedience. Oh, come on, somebody. You're preaching an old-time gospel? Yeah. Yeah, I am. Because we need to get back to it. The Bible says in the last days, there are going to be people having itching ears. They're going, to, they're going to look for teachers to preach and teach them things that make them feel good. Folks, I'm going to be honest with you. Sometimes when I read the Bible, there's some, can we just be honest? There's some things in there that bother me. Lord, I know you heard what this person said about me. I know you saw what they did to me. And you told me to forgive him. And I was a good little dude. I forgave him. Three times. This the fourth time. And I'm going to tell you, I want to lay hands suddenly and repeat. But you, you, what? You, how many times am I supposed to forgive? Seventy times. Seven? Oh, it bothers me. But guess what? It's the word. It is what the word of God says. And if we're going to be believers, that means we have to believe what the word of God says. If it ain't in there, I don't want to hear about it. In 1607, when they, founded, uh, when they founded Jamestown, the very next thing that they founded was a school. That school belonged to the church. The very next thing they founded, the very next school they founded was a church school. It was a Christian education. And they used a book, you can Google it later, it's called the New England Primer. Or if you're, uh, New England Primer, Primer Primer. It's called the New England, New England Primer. And if you open that book, when you're taught the alphabet, when you're taught the A, B, C's, A and Adam's fall, we send all, then there's a scripture. And B, and it sounds like every single thing was based on a biblical worldview. And then somewhere around the, late, the early 1900s, they began to make fun of the Holy Rollers they began to make fun of the church, and instead of advancing, we retreated. And now, if I tell you what they're, going, what they're teaching now, now that the schools belong to the government and not the church, if I told you what they were teaching your child in school, you would probably have a conniption fit. 
Turn with me to the book of Hosea. You there? Hosea chapter 1. And as a matter of fact, for I'm going to use poetic license here. I'll call it prophetic license. We're going to turn chapter 1. Let me just, uh, Hosea chapter 1. And as we read this, everybody say the word prophet. Okay? So when you say the word prophet, certain things come to mind. So say the word prophet again and let them let the build images in your mind. Prophet. So when you think of a prophet, you think of someone who's set aside, someone who, who's, who's, who's living a lifestyle of holiness and righteousness. You think of somebody that, uh, that, is, that, that is walking and hearing the words of God. You think about someone who has a relationship with the Almighty, who God can speak to, who's so in tune with the Spirit of God that if God were to whisper in heaven, he'd hear it like thunder and ten trains on the earth. But in Hebrews chapter 1, the Bible says, The word of the Lord came unto Hosea, the son of Barry. In the days of Uzziah, Jotham, look how long Hosea had a prophetic ministry. He survived all these kings, Uzziah, Jotham, Ahaz, Hezekiah, kings of Judah, and in the days of Jeroboam, the son of Joash, the king of Israel. Now, if you look in verse number two, the plot thickens. In verse number two, God speaks to Hosea and, and says, go and take unto you a wife. Now, stop right there. Hosea's been living righteous. He's been living holy his entire life. And he's probably thinking, you know, Lord, I, you, I, I know you got me one of those great, good old church of God wives. I'm, that's what I want. F- skirt down to the floor and, and hair in the Ph.D. <laughs> Pentecostal hairdo. And the Lord says, okay, Jose, let me take you down, and we, we, we're going to find her. And he's going down, and he went to church and, 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 and said, Lord, which one is she? You know, not there. She's not here, Lord, where is she at? Go outside, walk a couple, couple blocks down the street, and he walks, and he sees this woman. The Bible calls her a prostitute. The Bible, the King James says, a wife of whoredoms, and her name was Gomer. And the Lord tells to Hosea to take Gomer to be his wife. Okay? Now, let me just stop there. It it does not take much. The word of God is good on its own. The word of God will, 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 will go out and accomplish that which it was sent to do, and, it's, and it will not return void. Sometimes we wonder, and this is why we have to be careful, we have to have discernment. Just because somebody performs a miracle, it doesn't make them a saint. Gifts are called without repentance. Okay? And, 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 and so uh, uh, anybody can preach the word of God. Help me, Holy Ghost. Anybody can write a book on one or two scriptures. I mean, it is that good. But the power doesn't come in the hearing. The power comes in the doing. Oh, come on, somebody. Anybody can preach, but do, do you perform, do you obey the word of the Lord? In the book of 1 Samuel chapter 15, Saul had been chosen to be, to be king among Israel. He was only king for a few chapters before Samuel shows up. Samuel shows up after God had ordered Saul to lay waste to the Amalekites and, the, and, the, and to, to destroy everything. Saul decided to keep the gold, the silver. He decided to keep everything that was good, everything that was pleasant. And then when the prophet showed up, he was like, hey, bro, how you doing? It's good to see you. You know, I've just been living in the Lord. I've just been going in my car, listening to Caleb, and we've just been having, and while he's talking, something goes, bah. And Samuel said, really? You've obeyed? Yeah, man. We just, he said, then how is it that I hear the sound of the bleeding of sheep in my ear? Those things are supposed to have been laid to waste to. And not only that, but Saul spared Agag, the king of the Amalekites. And then the Lord speaks to Samuel and tells Samuel, you tell Saul this, it repenteth me that I have set up him to be king over Israel. And you tell him, verse 23, obedience is better than what? Sacrifice, because obedience is sacrifice. Jesus Christ became obedient to the point of death on the cross. Therefore, God has exalted him and given him a name above every other name, that at the sound of the name of every knee shall bow, every tongue shall confess. And so Hosea is here, and he hears a word from the Lord, but now he performs it. You learn later that the Bible says, you know, when when Hosea saw Gomer, he loved her. Now, this is a miracle in its own. He loved her. He looked beyond her condition, and he saw what God saw. Aren't you happy that when God looks at you, he don't see what other people see? 
Oh, come on, somebody. If any man is in Christ, the Bible says he is a new creature. The old things are what? Passed away, and behold, all things are new. Stop letting the devil beat you up with your past. If he comes back attacking you with your past, you pick up the book of Revelation and you attack him with his future. And the devil that was that deceived them was cast with them into the lake of fire, which burneth with fire and brimstone, and the smoke of their torment shall rise daily without sin. He don't like that scripture. And so he took this wife. And uh, uh, verse, verse number three, it's very important here. I'm, I'm, I'm trying, to, trying to close down here. Verse number three. So he went and took... The, the, Gomer, the daughter of uh, that name right there, uh, <laughs> which conceived and, and, and be, what does the Bible say? The last part of that verse. She conceived and what? She conceived and bare him a son. Okay? Verse number four. Verse number four. It says, and the Lord said unto him, call his name Jezreel, for a little while I will avenge the blood of Jezreel upon the house of Jehu. So God, uh, God uh, recognizes this as the son of Hosea, and he's, he's pretty much putting out his prophetic destiny. But if you look at the next verse, and the next verse, verse number five, uh, verse number six, excuse me. Uh, stay with me. Ver, uh, ver, verse number six, the, the, Lord, the Lord speaks, uh, excuse me, not the Lord speaks, I'm sorry. But what we find in verse number six is that she conceived, what does the Bible say? Again. Everybody say she conceived again. All right. Let's skip down to verse number eight. Now, when she had weaned Laruma, she conceived and did what? Bear son. And then what, ver, next verse, what did she call, what did they call this son? Lo am I, for what, what does the Lord say here? For ye or what? And I will what? And I want everybody to see this, that there is a difference between verse number three, verse number five, and verse number eight. In verse number three, you hear these, you see these words, and she conceived and bare him a son. But the next child did not belong to Hosea. And the next child did not belong to Hosea. It didn't say, and she conceived and bare him a daughter. And bare, no. The only, one of these children belonged to him, the first one, but the second and the third, they do not belong to him. And so to the point where God names one of them, lo am I, you are not my son. You are not, and I will not be your God. And the Lord is, 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 is allowing Hosea to experience what he is experiencing. And then, even though these children did not belong to Hosea, I want you to watch something. He still took care of them. He still took care of them. He invited them as his own. He treated them as his own. How many things have we given birth to in our life that did not belong to God? But he still takes care of. Because he's in covenant with us. You see, we, we, we know about contracts, but we've got we've to study covenants. You know, when we, when we marry people, Brother, Brother Juan, when, when, when we marry them, we, sometimes they do this little sand ceremony. And I'm not going to get into different ceremonies, okay? But the idea behind this process is, you know, she usually has pink sand, and he usually has, like, blue. And, you know, they got these little nice vestal, uh, vases or whatever, and they pour them out. And people are like, oh, but here's the point behind it. The point behind it is this covenant of marriage can only be undone when you can get your blue sand back in here and I can get my pink sand back in there. <laughs> and how many know that's not going to happen? God is in covenant with us. Yeah. God, even though we turn our back on him, the Bible says that he's married to the backslider. And so God is out there waiting and walking and wanting you to return. And sometimes I want you to know that it is entirely possible, okay, it is entirely possible to stray away from the Lord and not even know it. Well, how is that possible? Because we go to another lover who maybe looks the same, sounds the same, but is not the same as Yahweh. Well, how does that happen, Pastor Jer? Because we believe another gospel. Let's go back to the Old Testament. Exodus, the book of, the book of Exodus Exodus 20 talks about the Ten Commandments, the basic Ten Commandments. Remember the Sabbath and make it holy. 
But if you read the first part of that commandment, there's a word shall in there, and it says, and you shall work six days. Did you realize it was a commandment to work? The Bible says if a man don't work. Now, if I was asked you to raise your hand in here today, how many people would go murder? How many people would, would bear false witness? Nobody would raise their hand. But if I asked you today, how many of you actually have a Sabbath and you keep it holy? Are y'all with me? It's one of the commandments. And see, we, 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 we have just X that out of, of our lifestyle. Well, that scripture doesn't apply to me. Yes, it does. That's the reason he wrote it in the book. Why? Because he's worried. He's not concerned. He cares about your, your spiritual health and your physical health. But when we live in a, in a world, and unfortunately a church that's just dominated by money, 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 bail, 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 bail. Oh, gosh. But if we listen to the Bible, we're not supposed to work for money. Money's supposed to work for us. Another commandment. Thou shalt not covet what is thy neighbor's. Simple commandment. Don't covet what is your neighbor's. Why shouldn't we covet? He, he, he makes a list. I mean, he's thorough. Don't covet the neighbor's oxen. Don't cover the neighbor's servant. Don't cover the neighbor's wife. Don't cover, covet the neighbor's donkey. Don't cover the neighbor's house. Everybody say, don't covet. Now, let me ask you this question. Why does the Bible say that we shouldn't covet what is our neighbor's? Because it's our neighbor's. Because it's our neighbors, our neighbors. You see, and if we're listening to a false gospel, we'll get, a, we'll, get a, we'll get an attitude of entitlement. Well, I'm supposed to have that. Nowhere in the gospel will you see that Jesus or God punish people for being rich. It got so quiet. Whew. It is not a sin to be rich. Nowhere in the Bible will you read, well, you're supposed to take from these people because they have more and you give it to these people because they have not. It sounds gallant, doesn't it? Sounds wonderful. Sounds like Robin Hood. Let's rob from Peter to give to Paul. But I'm telling you right now, it's evil. It is a doctrine of devils. Well, Pastor J.R., don't you know in the book, of New, the book of Acts, they all lived and everybody had everything in common. Everybody had everything that was good between them and everybody that had more share but those had least by choice. You see, when I force you through legislation to give something that you, that's not called giving, that's called theft. It is so quiet, I'm just going to keep preaching. Well, the, the rich this, the rich that. Listen to what you're saying. You are coveting what is your neighbor's. Deuter, uh, the book of Exodus, chapter 30, verse 11. I love this one. Deuter, uh, I keep saying Deuteronomy. It's Exodus 30, verse 11. You know, God invented the tax. And he says, listen, Moses, gather everybody that is, uh, that's above the age of 20. I wish that was wonderful. Because let me tell you, when I, I remember the first paycheck I got. I was probably like 15 years old. And I saw how much money they took out of my check for taxes. I went to my mama, and she's like, uh-huh. Uh-huh. I told you you was doing that math wrong. And I, and I, and I got, well, well, mom, what if I don't tithe? You, you stutter? What you say? You, don't you say nothing about the tithe in my house. Let me tell you, everybody tithes. <laughs> the fish, the dog, everybody. I mean, I'm, 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 and I thank God for parents who did that because, y'all, I was so afraid. When I cashed my check, I literally went to the, to the bank, and, and, and if it was $100, y'all giving me this $100 and $10 bills, and the first $10 bill that hit that desk I took, and that was the tithe. My first, first, first fruits. And that's how I tithe my entire life. Exodus 30, verse 11. I know some of you are double-checking my references. Good. Amen. You, you should. You should never take anything. Okay, anyway. But everybody that's 20 years old, and, and I wish I was over, to, I wish this was law now because I didn't want to pay taxes at 15. <laughs> but they're going to pay a tax. And the Lord says this is in addition to the temple tax. And then if you read down to the next verse, this is something interesting. And he says, and the rich shall not pay more, and the poor shall not pay. Is that in your Bible? I know I'm making some people upset right now. I know, I know you're getting angry with me. 
I know you're getting upset, and, it, and it's okay, but I'm, I didn't, JR didn't write that in the, you brought that Bible in here? I didn't sneak and reach in your purse and write it in there. I didn't do that. It's been in there this entire time. And when we stand up as men and women of God and we, we stand prepared to lead men and women of God and, we, and God gives us the instruction, God gives us uh, the care and to be put in charge of their souls, we need to make sure that we have read that book from cover to cover. These rights that we have, it's not, let me tell you, long before that constitution ever rolled out in 1776, God wrote it in Exodus, Leviticus, Numbers, Deuteronomy. These rights are not given to me by law. They are given to me by God. They're given to me by God. Luke 12. This was not in my notes. Uh, if you go over to Luke 12, oh, I'm going to get in trouble. <laughs> Jesus is preaching such a good word. It's a fantastic word. And as he's preaching, a man, a man comes up to him and says, Jesus, oh, man, Jesus, you've been... This is good work. So could you please go to my brother and tell him to divide the inheritance? Now, this should tell you three things. I'm closing. I, I'm, I'm stepping on toes. He's like, please don't walk over here and preach. <laughs> but I want you to know this because I, want you to, I don't want you to, to, be, to be ignorant of the devil's devices. This, this slick, easy believism gospel is coming into the church, and instead of us establishing a kingdom that is built on faith, love, hope, and charity, we are literally, we are literally advancing unknowingly the kingdom and the government of the Antichrist. I'm going to say it. I'm, I'm going to say it. Communism. Luke 12, Luke 12, and Luke, so Jesus is preaching, and this man was like, Jesus, please, uh, 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 go, go talk to my brother and tell him to divide the inheritance, so immediately you know that the father is no longer living, immediately you should also know that he's the younger brother, okay, and he's upset because who got the inheritance? The older brother got the inheritance, and why did the older brother get the inheritance? Because he was the oldest. But the little brother thinks that he's entitled oh, Jesus, to this inheritance. And Jesus said, look, look at what Jesus says. Now, the words are in red. J.R. didn't say this. Jesus said it. He said, who, who, who made me judge over this thing? He's literally asking Jesus to redistribute wealth. Oh, oh. let's just pray. Lord, thank you for your word. Amen. And what does Jesus say? Why are you coveting that which is your brother's? We need to be careful how we raise our voice. We need to be careful where we raise our voice. And we need to be careful how we keep silent. And because we have not advanced in the world, now the world is now telling us how to preach the gospel and how to live the gospel in Virginia, in, in a couple of months, they're going to they're going to vote on a bill, and if they pass that bill, the message that I preach today will end me in jail. Y'all looking at me? I I'm not. Well, you're just being an alarmist. Well, most prophets were. That's why people didn't like him. <laughs> oh, here come the prophet. When you wake up in the morning, how many people have alarms? I wish I can play my alarm for you. Some of the staff has heard the alarm on my phone. When that thing rings, I'm telling you, you want to break it in pieces. It is loud, it is obnoxious, and it gets on your nerves. Well, God told the prophets to sound the alarm. Lift up your voice like a trumpet and spare not. Declare unto the house of Israel and Jacob their sins. Tell them to repent for the kingdom of God is at hand. We're not supposed to be liked by everybody. We're not supposed to be celebrated by everybody. Jesus again says, be, beware when all men speak good of you. This gospel that God has given us and he's given us to keep charge of men's souls. We cannot take this lightly. Just because I printed out a business card that says I'm a prophet doesn't mean anything. Have you read the word? Is this word like fire shut up on you? Shut up on the inside of you. Is can you hear the voice of the Lord? You know, Wednesday, Wednesday night. I'm, this is my my second closing. Wednesday night, 
this past Wednesday night, we were sitting in Bible study, and, and we've been talking about building a, a biblical worldview. And let me tell you, it has been thick. It has been tough, but we have read the Bible. Some people have gotten healed, delivered, set free. They repented of, 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 of non-godly biblical views, didn't even know it, didn't even know it, but being, being carried away into an evil doctrine. If you look in, in, in the book of Revelation, the Revelation and also Daniel, Isaiah give you hints of the economy and the government of the Antichrist. If you don't pledge allegiance to this form of government, you will not be able to buy, sell, or trade. Does that sound like another form of government to anybody? Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you better watch as well as pray. <laughs> and so we, the Lord said, don't, just don't, don't get on the piano, JR. Don't worship. Just, just begin to intercede. And let me tell you, we begin to pray. And even the young adults knew this was different. They're like, what is he doing? But the power of God just came in the room. And I'm just praying. I'm just interceding. And, and some of the young people there, they can raise your hand if you were there that Wednesday night. You know exactly what I'm talking about. You know exactly what happens next. And the Lord is just dealing with me. And God is just dealing with me about his people, about his people. And then uh, all of a sudden, the, the, uh, I noticed that the pizza was late, okay, because we, we eat pizza. It's okay. And, uh, and, and so the lady, the lady with the pizza came up to the door, and she saw us in there going at it, brother. And she was like. <laughs> and she turned to walk away, and I was like, no. And she said, and she came in, and immediately the Lord gave me a download for her. I've never seen her before in my life. And I went up there and I asked, I said, I said, hey, how you doing? And she said, I'm, I'm doing fine. Uh, uh, just, you know, the, the carrying this baby. And she pointed, she had a big coat on. She pointed to her, her pregnant womb. And, and, and I was uh, carrying this baby. It's just been so difficult. And immediately the Lord gave me a download. Now, because this is being broadcast live, I'm not going to get into the, the depth of that story. But I will tell you this, the devil is a liar. And I looked at him, I looked at her and I said, oh, so, so it's a boy. And she was like, well, yeah, it's, it's a boy. I was like, oh, I know. I know it's a boy. And she's like, well, how do you know? Look, I would tell you, but you would just run, okay? I need to will you in for the, for the presentation of the gospel. So just, and so, uh, and, 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 then, and then the Holy Spirit spoke to me again. I said, it's a boy. And I want you to know that despite what the doctors have told you, he's going to be born. He's going to be born fine. He's going to be born correct and healthy. This is a gift that the Lord has given you. And then I said, and he's going to be born on December 27th. And when I said that, her face just lit up. She's like, oh, how did you know that? Because God knows he knew you were coming here today. And he wanted to prove to you that he loved you. The Bible says that the gifts are called, uh, excuse me, the, the Bible says that the gifts are a sign for who? The non-believers. Listen, the devil does not care how much we speak in tongues, lay hands, and do it. He doesn't care how much we do it in here. But the moment that we walk out those doors and we begin to do that in the community, let me tell you, they will come for us like they're coming in January. And they're going to pass these laws that make it against the law for me to preach truth. And they say it's based on a premise of hate. No, God, God is not a God of hate. He is a God of love. For God so loved the world that he gave his only begotten son that whosoever believeth in him should not perish but have everlasting life. It is his will that no one should perish but that all come to repentance. If we're going to come to repentance, we've got to preach grace and truth. Because if there's no truth, people won't know that they need to be saved. They won't know that they need to repent of their sins. I'm going to tell you right now, homosexuality is a sin. We don't hate the sinner. We love you. We love you. I say all the time, if you don't like the way you're born, be born again. God loves you. Jesus died on the cross for you. You are the whole reason that Jesus came to the earth. He wants to love you. He wants to change you. He wants to pick you up and turn you around and put your feet on solid ground. I'll say it. I'll say it in January. If they pass the law, abortion is a sin. But God does not hate you. He does not hate the mother. He does not hate the father. He loves you. He wants to restore you. He wants to breathe life and hope and healing and peace into you. I'm going to say it. Gossip is a sin. 
Well, he's preaching on the earth. No, I'm going to tell you right now, gossip is a sin. Lo oh, come on, backbiting is a sin. Proverbs 6, 60, uh, Proverbs 6 tells you that there, there, there are se several things that God hates, but there's one that's an abomination to him, and that is he that sows discord among the brethren. And let me tell you, oh, come on, somebody. Gossip will send you to hell just as quick as adultery or fornication will. Don't think, because, oh, come on, somebody. Don't think because you haven't been found out that, that the judgment is passing. No, I'm telling you right now, repent for the remissions of your sins. The kingdom of God is at hand. The devil is speeding up things. He's speeding up these attacks. If you asked me three years ago, do, JR, did you think we would be where we are in Virginia right now? No, I'm telling you, no, I did not think it. But here we are. But I'm telling you right now, I'm not going to be quiet. Put me in jail, and I'll pray, and I'll, pr and I'll preach, and I'll sing, and then God can come down and do the jailhouse rock all over again. I don't, it doesn't matter to me. You can only kill this body, but I'm, I'm afraid. I'm, I'm fearing. I'm reverencing the one that has the power over life and death and the power over my soul and eternity. I don't care. Government, you can take my tax-exempt status. It's not G. Look, G Jesus died on the cross for me to be able to preach the gospel. The, 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 the Jonah part of me, and that's some of you who read the Bible, you know what I'm talking about. Sometimes the Jonah part of me wished that the government would have yanked the tax exempt status a long time ago. Because then we wouldn't have an excuse for not preaching the gospel. <sighs> Hosea Mary Gomer. Hosea's name means salvation, means deliverance. But get this, Gomer's name means completion. And see, God wanted completion. He wants salvation. This is, a, this is a picture of Jesus Christ. That's what this whole relationship is. The, 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 how, people would go, uh, how people would go and turn away from the Lord and go after other idols. They'll go after popularity. Man, I tell you, there was, a, there was a pastor the other day that got on national television and it broke my heart. Can I just talk about Kanye for one second? Look, we all know what he did before. I mean, there were... There were television shows about it. But this brother is now saying that Jesus has changed my life. And you know what? I'm happy for him. I, was, I told my young people the other day, the, I bought the first rap album I've ever bought in my life. And then I got upset because after I bought it from the app store, it's not classified under rap. It's classified under gospel. I'm like, oh, man, I was this close. And yes, let me tell you something. Say whatever you want about him, but let me tell you right now, it, was, it has been hilarious. It has been funny. It's, I'm telling you, I've literally rolled off my couch. My dog, I got two Great Danes. They have literally looked at me like I was crazy because I was laughing. I've heard it on CNN. I've heard it on CNBC. I've heard it on MSNBC. I've heard it on Fox News. Jesus is king. That's the name of his album. Jesus is king. You know how many times they said Jesus is king? I'm like, whoa! Every knee shall bow and every tongue shall confess that Jesus Christ is Lord to the glory of God the Father. He's king. He's king. He's king. Jesus is king. It's hilarious. And then you got preachers who are tearing him down. And one of the preachers who was tearing him down, if you just Google, read the next article after you Google his name. You, brother, you shouldn't be tearing anybody down. You should repent for the remission of your sins, for the kingdom of heaven is at hand. Okay, end of the story here. One day Gomer goes out from Hosea, his wife that he loved. Did he know about her past? Absolutely. He knew about it. She goes out one day, and she does not return. And now Hosea is left raising these kids by himself. He's a single dad. And I thank God for all of you single fathers in here. I thank God for all of you single mothers in here. I thank God for every grandma and, grand and grandpa who are raising their grandkids. 
because mom and dad is no longer on the scene. I thank God for you. I pray that God would give you extra grace. I pray right now that all of your resources and all of your needs are met financially, physically. I pray that, look, look, oh, come on, somebody. James will tell you, hello? James will tell you that good good and honest, true religion is not is not what we think it is, but it's taking care of the, of the widows and the orphan. How many know Jesus is a father to the fatherless? And you want to get near Jesus? Then find one of his children and take care of them. Bless them with something. Pour into them. How many know discipleship should cost some money? I, my, I, my bank account is drained monthly because of discipleship. The wealth of the kingdom of God does not exist to give me a Lamborghini or a $26 million jet. It exists to provide the people of God with freedom. And I, I do not want Jesus to come back, crack that sky, and I got $3 million in the bank that I have not done ministry with. I don't want to answer for it. Well, JR, you crazy. You shouldn't be. Let me tell you, if it's God's will, it's his bill. If he won't put the money up, he'll bring the price down. I'm not the comptroller. I'm the conduit. And Gomer didn't return. And I imagine that Hosea paced up and down the aisle looking at his watch. Oh, I wonder where she is. She should have been back by now. I want you to know that God is looking out over some of us today. God is looking out over our families. God is looking out over our loved ones. God is looking out over our unsaved sons and daughters, our unsaved uh, uh, granddaughters and grandsons, our unsaved aunts and uncles. And I want you to know that God has an assignment on them. He has an assignment for them. And you are part of that purpose. You are part of that reason. Do not give up on them. Do not stop walking and pacing the floor all night long. Do not look at what, do not allow the enemy to tell you that they are a lost cause. The Bible says that we shall train up a child in the way that he should go in the end. He shall not depart from away. This ain't the end. He's still there. Or she's still there. And Hosea, she did not return. And so one day, maybe Hosea got up, he got up one day and needed to go buy something for these kids. And he happened to walk down the street and there's a bunch of fanfare going on. People are yelling in the marketplace and he looks over. Oh, they're, they're auctioning off people. Crazy folk. I don't know why they do that. And as he turns his head, something catches his eye. He said, well, man, that lady look a lot like, but it can't be because there's no way in the world Gomer would go back into that lifestyle. Yeah, no way. I would, I've been too good to her. I paid every bill. I've, 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 I've put a ring on, that, on her finger. I've, I've, I've given her everything that she wanted. I provided for things for her that she didn't even know that she needed until I provided it. There's no way in the world that does. But, man, man that, 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 those eyes, it looks like Gomer. It is Gomer. Hosea chapter 3. Hosea sees it. That's his wife. And now she's being sold as a, as a prostitute, as a sex slave. And Hosea does the unthinkable. He does the unthinkable. He didn't leave her. She left him. Hosea reaches in his pocket. Now, she already belongs to him. Not property. She's his wife. He reaches in his pocket, and he pulls out a lot of money. Look at chapter 3. Bundles of barley, silver. He pull, he, I don't care what the price is. I'm going to redeem her. I know she's in horrible condition. I can see it. I know where she's been. I'm not crazy. But you see, I love her. Not this love that we, we, we talk about in movies. Not this love that we've, we've read in, 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 in all these crazy books or whatever. But I'm talking about real love. The love that would compel uh, Almighty God to send his only son because he wants to be with you for an eternity. And God reached deep in his pocket and said, I, I, I'll give anything. I'll give anything. Bring me all the gold. It's not enough. Bring me all the silver in heaven. It's not enough. Bring me the lamb. Bring me the lamb. 
and the Lamb of God was slain before the foundations of the earth were laid so that you and I could have access to eternal life. Look at your neighbor and say, neighbor, you're the whole reason why Jesus came to earth. I want you to know today, this morning, I, it doesn't matter what your lifestyle is. It doesn't matter what you have done. It doesn't matter if you're, it doesn't matter what condition you are in right now. If you are under the sound of my voice, I want you to know that God has pushed me and put me and primed me to preach this message to you because he wants you to know that he loves you. You may not even love yourself. But God loves you, and if you allow him today, he will pick you up out of that situation, out of that circumstance, out of that condition. And he will turn your life around. No one judges you here in this sense. Your, there's no accusers of yours here in this place. I, I hear your Holy Spirit. God, y'all just begin to pray right now. God is literally, there's literally a battle going on right now. He loves you. Jesus loves you. I don't care what your friends told you about church. I don't care how crazy they told you about church people. It was only the voice of the enemy trying to keep you from doing something that you're going to be doing right now. And that is making a decision saying, I, look, I'm, I'm tired. I've been running like Gomer. I've tried to end my own life. I've tried drugs. I've tried every other thing. It's even an accident that I'm here this morning. Somebody drugged me to church. Stand to your feet with me. And we're just going to close. In chapter 3, God gives Hosea a mandate, and he says, go back and preach to Israel and tell them they have gone astray from me. They have turned to other gods. They have turned to other lovers. They have turned to other books, and they have forsaken me. I challenge you, if you're in here today, I ch- if you have not read the Bible, if you have not read your book, the Bible, I challenge you, read it. I wouldn't, I would not, I I would not put anybody in, in, in leadership until they have read the Bible. I, it's okay. I know you read this book. I know you read this book from this prophet and this person and this thing like, but I'm telling you, you've got to read the book. And I pray that, I, I, I pray that the, the church once again raises the standard. Instead of lowering the bar, we raise the standard. Read the book. I don't want to hear from another preacher unless they read the book. I don't want to hear from another teacher unless they read the book. There is a war going on right now. We can't see it because they won't play it in the news. But right now in Indonesia, right now in India, right now in China and Iran, you will see that the most persecuted people group on the face of the earth are believers. They're coming after us. The spirit of the Antichrist is rallying up. And what, even though we, we, are say, we are facing potentially serious, uh, serious consequences legally this next year in Virginia, I want you to know that there are people who are facing even more than I. I got into it a while ago with with a a very well-known evangelist who scolded me for for downloading Bibles on iPods and sending them to China. He said, JR, you don't need to do that. The people, they can go in the library and they can just check out a Bible. Oh, yeah, they can, but they can also get flagged by the secret police. And that's exactly what happened. And the the Chinese officials are going, let me tell you something. See, it... Certain news networks won't tell you who these people really are. But the folks in Hong Kong, they're believers. This is their government trying to wipe out their faith. Their communist government, oh gosh, is going to roll tanks down the street and bury these people under it because they name the name of Jesus. There are some churches in China who are literally surviving on one page of the Bible. They know it back and forth. 
And we have all 66 books here in America, and 70% of us won't read it. I'll go a little further, and we call ourselves believers. Look, I'm not ragging on you today. I'm not preaching at you today. I'm re the Bible says, come, brethren, let us reason together. Let us reason together. Don't give over another piece of territory in this world because we haven't read the book. I will, look, I will stand toe to toe and I will preach this until the day I die. Church, we've got to read the book, amen? I hear you, Holy Spirit, my word. Today, if you're here and you're not, you know that you know that you know that you know that you're not where you should be with God. Then listen, don't lie to the Holy Spirit. If you're afraid of conviction, right now might be the best time to slip out. But if you haven't read the book, if they called the roll for prayer times and your name is not found, if you haven't been witnessing, if you haven't been telling people about Jesus, then I'm telling you right now, you are not where you were supposed to be with Jesus Christ. You are not living the gospel lifestyle. JR, these are heavy words. Yeah, but they're true. And if that's you today, I want to invite you to the front. Don't wait. Don't hesitate. Don't look around. You know who you are. I'm telling you, yeah, times are going to get tougher, but I'm telling you right now, only those who have their minds stayed on Jesus are going to be kept in perfect peace. If you know you're not where you're supposed to be with God, if you're not right with God, if your heart is not right, do not leave this building until you make it right. I'm just going to wait a little more. If we can get some prayer people up here. Thank you for those of you who are being honest. God can deal with that. God can mold that. God can mold that. I don't care what title you have in your name in this church. This altar call is for you. If you're caught in the trap of only reading your Bible because you have to preach a message, I'm talking to you. Psalms 119 says, Thy word, O God, is a lamp unto my feet and a light unto my path. The words have I hid in my heart that I might not sin against you. Oh, Father, we come to you today. We come to you now, God. Search us, Jesus. Search our hearts, God. See if there be any wicked way in us, Jesus. Father, if we haven't been keeping your commandments, if we haven't been honoring the Sabbath, Father, if we were given over to coveting, what is our neighbors under the precipice that it's good? It can be good and not God. Forgive us, God. Help us to trust in you. Help us to trust in your word. Not the government, not a piece of paper, not a court, but help us to trust in you. Some men trust in horses. Some men trust in chariots. But we, oh God, will trust in the name of the Lord.